Hi. Thank you for joining me here live in Dallas, Texas, on the Valder BB Show. Pat Seaman, you're a financial expert. You're with smartmoney.org. And tell us about our money, because the stock market is making us crazy. Yes, I heard that. <laughs> better not to think about the stock market sometimes. No, but I'd like to know, is your partner, partner financially cheating? I know that. Right. Tell us about that also. Yeah, let's talk about what's going on in our relationships. So we just did a, a survey that found that two in five people in couples are cheating on each other financially. They're committing financial infidelity. And what that means is they're hiding purchases or credit card bills or lying about how much money they make or how much debt they have or they have secret bank accounts. It's a wide range of behaviors. And what we found is that men and women are doing it at exactly the same rate. So you can't really point the finger and say, oh, men are doing it more, women are doing it more. We're all doing it. It's a big problem. It's getting worse. Two in five people in couples are committing financial infidelity against their partners or spouses. Did you guys look at why? We did. and. There are two main reasons. The lesser reason, about 30% of people do it because they think that finances should be private, even from the, their partners in their relationship. But by far, the vast majority of people are doing it because they're embarrassed or they're afraid of their spouse's disapproval. And if you think about that, it's the climate of judging each other or saying mean things to each other about how you're spending your money. That's what is creating this, this wave of financial infidelity going on. Okay. I hope there's some resolution because I'm going to ask you some personal questions about that, mm -hmm. meaning what are the signs that your partner may be cheating financially? You'll see some warning signs. You might run across a receipt that you don't recognize or you might not see receipts that you should be seeing. So your partner is pulling all the itemization out of the credit card statement. Really a good way to tell is if your partner is defensive or withdrawn when you try to bring up the topic of money. If you see any of that, it's worth a conversation to figure out what's going on. Once this is brought to the light, how, you, how do you find a, a, a workable solution for this? So this is a deal breaker in some marriages. Sure. It all comes down to communication and what you can agree on as a couple. One of the things that works for people is having a little bit of money of their own, discretionary money they can spend however they want, or setting a certain amount. Anything under that you can spend. Anything over that, though, you have to talk to your partner. For some couples, that could be as little as $25. For others, it might be a couple hundred dollars. But whatever it is, it's something you should be working on together. Realize that as a couple, when you pool your money, you'll, you can get to your financial goals faster than if you're doing it by yourself and faster than if you're undermining each other. So you really want to find a way to work together, get everything out on the table, and, and not lie about the things that you're doing financially. Pat Seaman is a senior director with SmartAboutMoney.org and a financial expert. Let me ask you, Pat. So people listening to this, they're listening and they're weighing in by um, uh, Facebook, their own Facebook. They want to know, once this trust is broken now, how do they restore it? It'll take a lot of time and a lot of transparency. One of the things you might think about is finding a place where all of the financial records are transparent. Everyone has passwords to everything. Maybe you even sit down together every month and do the bills together, at least for a time, until you can really be confident that your partner is, is on the same page, that they're not hiding things or lying about money anymore. It, it just takes time and, and some good communication between the two of you. Well, Pat, you've given us some great information. Where can my audience go? Because I know when you, when you commit a behavior, then you feel guilt, then you feel bad, then you feel mm -hmm. rage. Let me tell you, see, I've had a little practice. <laughs> anyway, where do you go right. on the web where you could probably uh, uh, learn some more? We have a great website, smartaboutmoney.org. It's completely non-commercial. It has a lot of great tips and resources for couples who are either dealing with financial infidelity or who just want to make a good start with their money and learn the basics, budgeting and setting goals and working together as a couple to accomplish what they want to financially. It's smartaboutmoney.org. 
Pat, I want to thank you so very much for being my guest. I've read your articles. I've read your, I've heard, read your interviews. In mm-hmm. essence, Women Day, The Street, Washington Time, you are a money expert. Thank you so much for being my guest today. Thank you for having me.